guys. Today I'm going to share several different options for natural flea and tick control and prevention um, for dogs. We're going to mostly do dogs, but I will talk a little bit about the cats and the, the farm animals as well. But we have got a whole arsenal of natural stuff that we can use. Um, you're not without options. There's so many and it's so good to share. So I'm going to share everything that I've been doing for the past 15, 20 years for my dogs and we'll get into it. Okay. So where do I start? Oh my goodness. Well, um, in my store, I sell mostly diatomaceous earth, which is my number one thing for flea and tick prevention and a flea killer, flea and tick killer. But it's not always the best option for everyone. There's a lot of reasons why it, you might have trouble with it. It doesn't work as good. It doesn't work real good in humid areas and it's uh, messy. And if you have a lot of dogs, you have to do all of them. And I mean, it's not always the best option, but it's my number one go-to. And I, I pretty much use all of these things um, because there's different scenarios where I need to use certain things. So diatomaceous earth is my number one that I love, 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 love so much. And I do add neem, and which Etsy just recently made me revamp my recipe and take neem out. They said no neem is allowed to be sold on Etsy, um, but a lot of neem is still, neem products are still being sold on Etsy and I think they're just trying to weed it all out. I guess it is something that is regulated with the EPA for if you're using it, if you're claiming that it kills fleas and ticks, you have to have EPA registration. Uh, I'm using neem powder, which is super safe. It is not toxic to dogs or cats. Neem oil would be, so they probably just don't even want to mess with any of that. So anyways, right now my blend only has rosemary and lemongrass in it. And which those two things are extra great. I mean, neem is, if you want to add neem, you can do that. Um, for anybody who wants my recipe, you can always uh, email me. I'll give you my recipes. Um, but I do add ground rosemary, ground lemongrass in here. And I've been experimenting with doing uh, like ground geranium and different things. I'm always evolving everything and coming out with new stuff. So anyways, this is awesome. And I do have other videos on using this. I'll link those down below if you want to really go in depth on the diatomaceous earth. And this is food grade, 100% food grade. You have to use food grade. You can get it anywhere, like at a farm store. You can buy it on Amazon. You can get it everywhere. I'll link my link down below too. Um, but anyways, that's number one. Okay, number two are using essential oils with dogs. You can't use them on cats. You, you can, but you shouldn't. Uh, so many cats, uh, you know, are highly sensitive to them and all cats, their livers don't get rid of the essential oils like they should. They're pretty safe for dogs and, um, you need, still need to use them with caution because just cause they're natural doesn't mean they're just, oh, they're a hundred percent safe. So I make a bunch of blends. I do make a spray, um, and I can give you my recipes for this because I mean, you can buy it in my store or you can make your own for pennies. Um, I make several different versions and um, I use clove, cedarwood oil, cinnamon, peppermint, neem, which I have to take the neem out for Etsy. But, um, and then I add a hemp oil uh, so it just sticks to the coat better. But I mean, you could use any kind of oil. You could use, you know, like an olive oil or a fractionated coconut oil or anything like that. You can even use a little bit of dish soap, but I wouldn't want that on my dog's coat, you know. Um, but I have, I've done that in a pinch. You don't have what you need. Now you can use citronella. Uh, cedarwood is like amazing for fleas. It really, really repels them. Um, and fur needle. This is something I'm not using in these ones, but um, I've been experimenting with all the different pine needles, uh, juniper, fur needle. They're all very, very friendly to dogs and um, really, really pleasant smell. And the fleas and ticks absolutely hate that. 
So those are really great essential oils. And you can mix these. Um, I have a recipe for this, but I've just started doing this. I mix them into a carrier oil of either fractionated coconut oil, which is amazing because it's really a stable oil and doesn't go rancid. Like a grapeseed oil goes rancid pretty fast and even olive oil can, flaxseed oil, things like that go rancid really fast. But uh, if you do a fractionated coconut oil and you mix some of your blended essential oils into it and drip them on your collars, like these nylon collars, and you do that once a week, this is a game changer. This is, a, it, it not only doesn't really make your dog smell good, it doesn't seem to bother them. If you, if you mix it, if, I wouldn't put them on straight because then that would just be, I wouldn't wanna wear something around my head that's just constantly so smelly, you know? So that's the way I look at it. But it does get into their skin and it really makes these uh, fleas and ticks not wanna jump on them. It will not kill them but it will repel them. So that is a great tip. And of course, it's no, it's kind of like using these all natural um, flea and tick collars that are infused with like clove and cinnamon and peppermint and everything. And they're infused at sight. I mean, you can, I've literally put them around my wrist and worn them all day to see if they irritated me and they don't. So these are very, very safe. These, uh, they have them all over Amazon and everything. Um, we'll talk about this one. This one is not, uh, essential oils. This has uh, got a all natural, uh, more concentrated thing, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, another thing is if you want to kill your fleas right away that are on your dog, then you'll want to bathe them in soap. And everybody thinks Dawn dishwashing soap is the bomb for killing fleas. And it is, I mean, it does work, but all dish soap all soap kills uh, bugs. Even in your garden, you can mix up some just dish soap and water and go spray stink, uh, squash bugs and they die instantly right in front of you. It suffocates them. So, it, it, I mean, I make a uh, both a small and a large uh, natural goat's milk and this has the cedar wood and geranium and all kinds of different things, neem, all kinds of stuff, not anymore on Etsy, but, uh, it's it, lavender is great, uh, but these will kill the fleas that are on your dog. But as soon as your dog is dried and the smell starts to wear off and they go back outside and you have fleas in your grass, new fleas are gonna jump on. That is where you're, I mean, it, fleas are really hard to deal with and ticks too, but fleas are to me are even worse. You need to be treating your yard at the same time uh, that you're treating your dogs because, um, I mean, you wouldn't have to, there's, there's a lazy way of doing it, is if you are bathing your dog, putting it on diatomaceous earth constantly and everything, and they're going out and picking up new fleas, as those new fleas are coming in contact with these things that are killing them, you're slowly breaking their life cycle, even out into the yard. And eventually, maybe six months, you might eventually break that life cycle and completely get rid of them. So it would be much easier to mow your, keep everything mowed short, and then you can buy, there's several options for your yard, which is amazing. Um, I love this stuff, it's called Bet's Best. It is a yard, it's yard and kennel spray, plant-based formula, kills mosquitoes, fleas, flea larvae, flea eggs, and ticks. Concentrate for outdoor use. And it, this one deal sprayer that hooks your hose um, is up to 5,000 square foot yard. And it's fairly cheap. I think it's like 15 or $16 on Amazon. And I love treating my yard with this. This is amazing stuff. Now, you could get a sprayer and you could use the, they have a uh, peppermint oil, eugen oil, which is going to be clove. And then they have sodium lauryl sulfate. What is sodium lauryl sulfate? Soap. That's what it is. And um, then they have inner ingredients that are unactive in uh, water and sodium benzoate, which is uh, going to be a preservative, which you don't have to have. 
they probably have to have that for, um, you know, like EPA or whatever the registrations are that they have to have that for a shelf life. But a lot of time, I, I make my own a lot with my own essential oils and I have a hose sprayer and I mix everything. Just, I trial and aired it and it, you know, I don't mix it too horribly strong, but oh, it works great. Awesome. You can use orange oil, you can use citronella, you can do so much to spray off your yard and your keep scorpions down, it keeps spiders, everything out. But sometimes I get lazy and I just buy it already like this. And um, I just, I like to support these companies as well. So I do buy, buy it as well. Another thing you can do is you can, if, if, if you are really having a bad flea and, flea and tick infestation, and the, because these are kind of mild, I mean, they, they do work, but they're, they're more on the mild side. You can use pyrethrins. And pyrethrins are natural, but they are extremely toxic to bees and pollen, you know, our pollinators and our beneficial bugs and everything. So I use pyrethrins with extreme caution and um, it, it, they're still very, very safe for their, it's super toxic to cats. So you don't ever want to spray pyrethrins around cats, but dogs and chickens and livestock and everything, pyrethrins are, work amazing. And that's when you've really got a problem. Like if you have hen fleas, stick type fleas on chickens, those are really hard to get rid of. Uh, this is the way to go. And this, this is, um, Garden Star Garden and Poultry Dust with Pyrethrin. Um, now the difference between a pyrethroid and a pyrethrin is pyrethroids are synthetic. They're chemically made. They're a chemical version uh, made in a laboratory to mimic uh, the pyrethrin. The pyrethrin comes from crushed chrysanthemums is from the way I understand it. Um, I'm not sure what the other inner ingredients are in this but are 99% so it's only 0.25% of a pyrethrin and it'd be great if it was in diatomaceous earth but it's in some kind of a, a dust um, but this is great to dust your chickens uh, you know you can dust your yard your garden I mean all kinds of stuff with this uh, it does have on here for dogs um, definitely not cats uh, I wouldn't, I mean, I have this on hand because sometimes I get, you know, sieges of stuff. So I always have this on hand, um, but that is another option. And then this uh, pyrethrins already come. Um, there's a permethrin and a pyrethrin. I'm not real sure on the two different, uh, they're just two different derivatives of it. But um, this is a flea and tick spray for dogs and it is just citronella and pyrethrins and water and that's it and i get this at my local farm store for like 7.99 it's a big um let's see it's one quart eight ounce so it's one and a half quarts um it's a big bottle of it and to me this is the big guns you know like this is something like if you have seed ticks or you have ticks really bad this like kills everything this is amazing amazing stuff um uh, it's water-based, but you, you know, I'm what I do is sometimes I just buy this and sometimes I make my own. I just use my own citronella and then I actually, let me go get it. I didn't bring it out here. Hang on. I can't believe I didn't bring this out there. Um, okay. This is a pyrethrin concentrate. This is a hundred percent natural botanical insecticide and it has a picture of a flea on it and a fly. Yeah, it's excellent for flies as well. And um, it's this can be sprayed on your garden, um, but it is so toxic to our pollinators and our beneficial insects and everything. So use this so sparingly. But what I do is I mix these um, at, they, you know, send a, a thing for everything you're gonna use it for and how to mix it. And I mix it into a sprayer and distilled water is what I use. And then I have, you know, the same exact thing 
that they're selling at the store just by mixing, and, and this is pennies, uh, literally pennies to make this. So that's a great way to go if you're on a budget and you, but if you're in a hurry and you just wanna grab that, that's awesome too. So another thing you can do for fleas and ticks, it's very much like your garden. Your garden soil depicts how bad your pests are gonna be. The worst a plant is, and it's not getting enough nutrition and everything, that's the one that the pests are gonna go to first. It's the same way with dogs and cats. Uh, they need to eat really a, pro, a species appropriate diet, not a lot of corn, soy, and all that stuff. Um, they just need to eat really healthy lean meats and veggies, fermented foods, just a really good diet, and that's really gonna cut down on fleas and ticks. Getting your dog healthy, really working on their immune system and all that, that's like the number one thing, and then, you know, if you do have small problems here and there, it's going to be a lot easier to combat. Um, I do make some blends with dietary shirt that are a, a feed. Uh, you can feed them and it's got like brewer's yeast and all kinds of things to boost their immune system, keeps them worm free, which, you know, frees up their immune system, not having to work so hard and everything. And it's got uh, MSM, which is a sulfur, it garlic, all kinds of stuff in it that really helps. And you know, if you want my recipe for that and you wanna make your own, I will definitely share it. Um, it's a great thing to feed them on top of it. It's, you know, on top of everything that you do. And, oh, this was another thing. These flea and tick collars, I just ordered these, I got four. $30, I think. And I had to bring out the big guns on these because I have my son's two great Pyrenees. They're four month old puppies and they're in my goat pen right now. Um, I'm training them for them and then they're going to move up there. But he, uh, these puppies came off the river and they were full of fleas and ticks to begin with. And we, I didn't have fleas at all in here. And the, these puppies came, I think, like in the beginning of March when it was still cold, and they were full of fleas and ticks, which was bizarre. And I put them in my goat pen, and as it started to warm up, um, I was using the diatomaceous shirt on them, and it was it was working pretty good. And as it, then we got these really heavy rains, and we were having 60-70% humidity every day, which diatomaceous shirt won't work very good when it's like that. And then these are great Pyrenees Anatolian mixes and their coats, their double coats. Oh, so thick. So really having a lot of trouble getting it down to their skin and getting it all over them. And then I had the outbreak of my stick type fleas in my barn, in my chickens again this year. I've been battling them for like four years now. And so this year I decided to go with the bigger guns, really work on the, the, the nesting boxes and the floor of the chicken house and everything with the pyrethrins and I've been dusting the chickens and I, I mean it's a huge difference but these puppies got stick type fleas all over their nose all over their ears so I was using um the stuff that I make it's a salve it I call it the bomb and this stuff I put um clove, cinnamon, peppermint oil, tea tree, citronella, and lavender oil. In a, uh, uh, and this is in a base of beeswax, coconut oil, and shea butter. And I absolutely love this stuff. It is, smells amazing. It's very creamy. It is great for putting on their ears if they have biting flies, um, gnats, mosquitoes, things like this. You can rub it into your hands and do your entire dog. Um, it is greasy. It does attract dirt. Um, it does soak in pretty good. And um, within maybe a couple hours, it quits attracting dirt. But if you rub it on and then just let them right out and they roll in the dirt, they're gonna be full of dirt. And um, I, I actually sent a sample to a lady the other day who wanted to know if it attracted dirt she went hiking a lot and I explained it to her so I sent her a sample and she came back like two weeks later 
and said she absolutely loved it and that it did soak in and, and she ordered some. So that this was great for these puppies, for their ears and their nose, but I had to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And it was definitely killing what was on there. And I was a little leery about spraying them down with this stuff, but I went ahead and ordered these. And these, from the way I understood it, they didn't seem to um, list their active ingredients. And it says active ingredients, see inside instruction manual. I'm sure this is from China. And it was definitely full of uh, fragrance oils. It was not, it, 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 anyways. It is a pyrethroids and then some other type of, um, well, I Googled them. I can't even remember what they were, but I Googled them and they're extremely uh, low toxicity and um, very, very safe. They're not, if you like ate them, they would be like cause vomiting and this, that and the other, but not death or anything like that. And they are not a carcinogenic. So I really, really did not mind. And, um, I went ahead and put them on, uh, but I mean, I, I don't know if I would order these again. I, I don't know because I really don't like the fact that there is frag they're so fragrant and fra I don't like fragrance oils. They're just, to me, why not use, you know, citronella or, I mean, you could do the same thing, but I did order these and, and off of Amazon, try Oak Flea and Tick Color for Dogs and I mean, I'm happy with it. Replace color every six months, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I don't know if I will order these again. I might go to Wonderside. I really do like Wonderside as well. Another thing you can do, um, if you don't want to make go to making all this with the shea butter and all that, this is healthy for their coat, is just get some raw organic coconut oil and mix some, melt it down and mix some of your essential oils in it and you've got the same thing. And this works great if you have horses to put this under their belly where the flies always bite them and they get that big fly sore. You can do your horse's ears inside their ears. Um, you could do it all over their body with your hands or you could rub it in with, you know, you could rub it into this and rub a cloth all over them and everything. Do their legs. If you have biting flies on their legs, I do Rio's back, my cow. Um, there's just all kind. You could even mix in some of your... Um, of your pyrethrins if you really wanted something more stronger. But, um, and you could do this pyrethrins in the collar as well and make your own flea collar. Um, you just have to, since there's no real instructions to do that, you would have to maybe infuse it into a your spray and then soak the collar in it and then put it on them. It's probably what I would do. Um, there's just all kinds of things you can do. The yellow sulfur works really good. Uh, oh, Saturday, that Saturday lime, that works amazing in your yard for fleas and ticks. It's super, uh, non-toxic to dogs and cats. So that would be a good one for cats. Most of all these things cannot be used on cats. Um, the coconut oil I do use on my cats. I put it on their ears a lot without any essential oils added to it. They can't use the balm. They can use the diatomaceous earth. Cats can. They can use the coconut oil. And they can also take this, uh, the brewer's yeast and all that, which really helps. But um, I do have a whole cat video, and I'll link that down below. Um, if you've got cats and you're trying to do this, I've got dogs and cats and it's a little bit of a challenge on where I spray and how I do things. So my cats don't really come in contact with that. Um, and you know, I've got goats that get fleas. <laughs> Believe me, I didn't know goats got fleas, but they do. And I've been spraying my goats and, um, but for the most part, I get rid of stuff pretty fast and easy. Like I'll adopt a dog or have a dog come in or uh, the stick type fleas came in from birds nesting in my barn. Rodents come in, they can even come in on snakes. So you're gonna get fleas somehow. And if you don't really live in an area with ticks, we don't really have ticks out here. We don't have a whole lot of trees, but 
in the spring I started out, I had, I don't know, four or five ticks on the dog's ears. I was like, what is going on? So I started diligently doing stuff and we have not had a tick now in two months. So um, definitely got rid of the ticks. I am on the low end of the fleas. We are almost out of not having any fleas. So that will be a plus. Um, doing a lot of stuff in my garden. I'll have a bunch. I, I think my channel should be all pest control because living out here on, in Oklahoma <laughs> and I mean, we have, you know, scorpions, snakes, stickers, everything you could possibly think that is, is very invasive and caustic and, and poisonous and blah, uh, black widow spiders everywhere and everything. Um, we have it. And, um, so I'm always working and flies. Oh my gosh. With the livestock, I have pigs, horses, donkeys, chickens, goats. Um, cats, dogs, you know, we just, we have turkeys now. We have so much stuff and trying to keep everything healthy naturally, 100% naturally, 100% orga organic. And all this stuff is pretty much organic is, I think this, I don't know if pyrethrins are, are the OMRI for, or, for organic gardening. They might be though. Um, probably maybe not but i'm not 100 percent sure on that well anyways um i hope you guys got something out of this you understand that there are lots of options uh not every there's not one natural silver bullet that is going to be for everyone and if you don't want to go to the vet and use their their porons their you know the ones that you put on their their skin or you don't want to give them the pill or anything like that. Um, there are other options that are a little bit less toxic. Um, you know, I haven't talked, I, there's even apple cider vinegar. If you research it there, so many people are sharing different natural options that actually work, you know, um, they, they really do. I've, I've been doing this for the past 15 years. Um, and in that time frame, I always have about 10 dogs you know, and my dogs are, I've always in the last, you know, I'm 60 years old now. In the past, uh, I don't know, uh, 50 years, uh, my, my mom was a dog groomer. I mean, I grew up, you know, with dogs. Um, I was always at the vet doing everything that way. And my dogs were e extremely sick, like a lot of cancer and, and seizures and just everything you could imagine. And this past 15 years of going really natural and feeding my dogs just, you know, really good food and doing all this more natural stuff and everything, I haven't been to the vet in 15 years. Now, I mean, if I had a dog with needed a broke, you know, had a broken leg or whatever, I needed a vet for something like that, but I haven't even needed a vet for that in, um, I mean, I've just learned to really do a whole lot of the stuff myself. But I think not using all those chemicals has made my dogs a lot healthier. That's my opinion. Um, I know that I totally understand why they make them because sometimes the sieges of fleas and ticks and, you know, heartworms and all kinds of stuff, like, it's frustrating. Even using natural stuff, it can be very frustrating. And I can see why some of these big companies are coming up with some of these horrible chemicals because i mean these pests are really bad you know but they're not that bad i mean it to me i just i've had i've i've even used ivermectin and i had a dog die from it and um my vet told me to put ivermectin on my dog that had mange and um you know, she was, she died nine days after that. And I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm just not going down that road anymore. This is, if you're looking for this, this, I mean, subscribe to my channel because I'm going to share lots and lots of my stuff, lots of my knowledge and everything. And like I said, I do sell all this stuff, but you don't have to buy mine. If you are frugal and you want to make it and you know, I will share recipes and people are like, aren't you worried other people are going to sell your stuff? 
and you know make their own and sell it. yeah i hope they do i hope everybody uses natural stuff and i don't there's room for all of us to be selling it i don't care it i it would make my heart happy to have somebody another person out there getting more and more natural things out there as an option for everyone because so many i didn't know I, i'm still learning stuff every single day about different herbs and natural things and i mean it's like mind-blowing there are so many wonderful things but anyways i'm not going to keep you anymore i'm going to go ahead and go bathe a few dogs and um do a few i got pearl a new collar today so i'm going to do her collar and i got scarlet a new collar and those two are going to get their baths today and these flea collars and um yeah if you uh like my video give me a thumbs up share it if you have anybody that you know with dogs that might have some use for it and subscribe to my channel we'll talk to you later bye